Former Starbucks worker Jason Saxton also testified at the hearing. In April, our store won our election by a landslide 26 to 5, despite all of the threats and intimidation. Starbucks retaliation and union busting ramped up even more after we won our election. We were constantly being watched and managers listened in on our conversations through our headsets. Store hours were constantly changing and hours kept getting cut. People were fired right on the shop floor. They fired seven of our union members, two of them were shift supervisors. Two partners requested medical and maternity leave, management refused to sign off on their leave, and they were terminated. Several people quit, including my wife. Some of us were told that we should look for another job. In July, I led a two-day unfair labor practice strike and delivered our demands. A month later, I was fired for supposedly being disruptive. That was former Starbucks worker Jason Saxton testifying Wednesday before the Senate. He joins us now from Augusta, Georgia. Jason, welcome to Democracy Now! Can you talk about the significance of this hearing and the grilling of the— well, usually everyone thinks of him as the Starbucks CEO, uh, Howard Schultz, uh, but, in fact, he just resigned. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, you know, yesterday's hearing was a very interesting few hours. Um, Howard Schultz, you know, does, did what he always does and, you know, misrepresented what was actually going on in stores. And maybe that's just because he doesn't know, um, even though he said he, he came back for operations and uh, for the customers, even though he constantly says he's there for the partners. Give us some background to your own story. What happened uh, in July? What led uh, to your being fired last July from the Augusta, Georgia, Starbucks store where you were working? Yeah. So at my store, we decided that we were going to unionize because we were facing a lot of staffing issues. People's hours kept getting cut. Um, the training was insufficient. Uh, Health care uh, coverage was too expensive, still is too expensive. And my, myself personally went on parental leave to have our, uh, so my wife and I could have our daughter and it was insufficient. It was just long enough for us to develop postpartum depression and then have to go right back to work. So we went forward with that and we kept dealing with those issues after our election. And that is also when they started firing a lot of us and they fired a shift supervisor. And so we decided to do a walkout, which led to a two day strike. And after that two-day strike, I went back to work, everything was good, went on vacation and came back, and I was fired. And they said that I was being disruptive. Now, again, on the day of the walkout, I wasn't being disruptive. And not only that, I wasn't a partner. I wasn't working at the time. I was off the clock. And, and what's your sense, Jason, from uh, the other employees at that store, but also at Starbucks stores elsewhere? Uh, if you said you mentioned some of them now, but what working conditions are like uh, for Starbucks employees? What precisely are the health benefits they get? You said it's very expensive, uh, time off, how many hours a week they work. If you could just say, um, you know, what are those conditions? I mean, the conditions are insane, right? So a, par a partner, which is what Starbucks calls their employees, can work one week 25 hours and the next week work five hours. So there's no stability in how much you're earning and how many hours you're getting. So you can't afford to pay your bills and you have to choose between gas and food. Um, the other working conditions like on the shop floor would be, you know, if you're down and warming, you know, you could burn yourself consistently. And that happens a lot with a lot of the products that go in the ovens. You know, we're constantly moving rapidly and constantly understaffed and having to meet the goals that Starbucks wants us to meet, which is 45 to 60 second out the window times, you know, for dry food. Let me ask you something, Jason. I think the number is something like 293 Starbucks stores have voted to organize of the 9,000 and seems to be going across the country. Um, Howard Schultz was grilled about the bargaining session, something like there have been 85. But in many of those cases, is it true the Starbucks officials work out, uh, walk out within 15 minutes? So. I don't have any firsthand experience because Starbucks has refused to negotiate with my store. 
Um, but from what I have heard from other locations is that, yes, they it's been six minutes at one bargaining session. And it's simply because they don't like that there are people on Zoom, which I think it's funny. They, they Howard Schultz said during the hearing that they didn't want extra people to be in the background on the Zoom calls. But like you're constantly listening to us and surveilling us when we're working and then using that to terminate us and write us up. You know, and then also Starbucks policy allows customers to come in and record us all day long, and we can't do anything about it. Finally, you testified before the Senate, but um, as we wrap up, your final comment, um, not only to Starbucks workers around the country, but for people to understand Starbucks is a, obviously a global corporation, about what people should know about Starbucks. I think the biggest thing that people should know about Starbucks is that while they tout themselves as a progressive company, while they tout that they're partner first, their actions, and even in Howard Schultz's words yesterday, don't show that they actually care to listen and understand that direct relationship that Howard Schultz says he wants is just so they can continue to dictate what they want to do and not actually give the partners a chance to say what's going on in their store and what they need to be whole. Well, Jason Saxton, I want to thank you for being with us. Former Starbucks shift manager terminated after leading the union drive at a Starbucks store in Augusta, Georgia. He testified on Wednesday before the Senate Help Committee, Health, Education, Labor and Pensions. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. When we come back, filmmaker Jennifer Fox joins us. Five years ago, she made a remarkable film about a coach that abused her as a child. Now she's named him Ted Nash, the legendary Olympic rower and coach. She'll join us. Stay with us.